welcome to Nottingham. My name is Eddie Curry and I'm the Head of the Parks and Open Spaces here in the City Council. Um, it's been a great pleasure to welcome such a brilliant turnout today, actually. It's been such a miserable day. Not a day when some people might not want to come to Nottingham, they don't know where they're from in the county. Uh, I think that's not what we <laughs> uh, That said, yeah, welcome again. It's, uh, it's great to see you all. Today's a real first for us really in terms of trying to pull together the community voice of parks and it's just so important that we you know, continue to support and develop those community forums. But just to get things moving, uh, I've just got a few, a few domestics uh, to talk you through. In terms of fire alarms, we're not expecting any today, but when one goes off you'll know what it is because it says this is a fire, get out, uh, quite literally. If that does happen, we just follow the, the sign, get out to the door, go out the door and turn left and walk up the street. And there's a meeting point, there's an NHS walking centre, and that's where we meet, just on the right hand side, just up the street. Go out the door, up the street. <laughs> it's a good place to meet, actually. Uh, I'll have I'll put you all in, but if anybody leaves, can we make sure they need to tie an out at the register when we go? Because that's the fire register that I'll be taking with me. Um, so if you don't just pay attention to that. In terms of toilets, if you go out this door, head towards the front door, past the second post, and then there's a little sort of walkway where the toilets are on your right hand side. So it's just out towards the door on your left. Uh, and just one final point, in terms of mobile phones, if people can just do the courteous thing and turn them off, turn them down, all that great, uh, that would be appreciated. Anyway, just to get things started, I'd just like to introduce you to Sarah Royal, who's the Chief Exec of the National Federation of Parks and Green Spaces. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you very much, Eddie. Welcome today to the first conference for hopefully starting up a network for the whole of the east in the middle of the country. A big thank you to Nottingham for hosting us today. Um, it's really the head spiders in the room. Spiders with the room and the space, and we're hopefully going to have a lovely day where we can get to know each other today. Get speak to somebody you have not spoken to before. Get to know somebody from a different location you haven't spoken to before. Because we've got people from all over the east. You see the list on your delegates list from everywhere, Nottingham, Derby, all over the place. We're going to make you connections today, we're going to find out your information, and what we want to do is move forward, how we're going to move forward the network, how we can stay in touch and help each other out, because we're all doing such brilliant work on all our sites, all across the East. So we all come across the same problems and the same issues, so we can all network, help each other out, share knowledge, because it makes such a difference, communicate, and we can start building a community voice for the east of the country. Now, I'm doing this around the whole of the country. There's a Northwest Forum already in existence, and they're meeting today as well. They've already got the voice of all the Northwest groups getting together. So we need to start the East Midlands getting together. And then next Saturday, I'm running this in the West Midlands. So I'm doing this all over the country, and we're going to get networked community voices all over the country, I'm going to try and bring it all together to get a big community voice for the whole of the country's parts and open places, which is really important. So that is what we're all about here today. And finding out some useful fun things of what's going on. So the paperwork you've got, you've got an agenda for the day. There's a delegates list. I hope I've got you all on there correctly. Um, I've put together a list of useful websites. I run the Birmingham Open Spaces Forum with my colleague Sarah, and I'm always looking for useful information to send out to all our community groups. So I've put together some really good websites, have a look on there, useful information, useful people to help. We've got Love Parks, we've got Andrew at the back here from Love Parks. They're a wonderful resource, go and speak to us, we've got all sorts of help and information, and they do training for all friends groups. So go and speak to Andrea. And we've got Simon from Wixdeen at the back there, thank you to Simon. He's come from Wixdeen Playscapes, so all the information about playgrounds, what they can do, go and have a look, all his literature is there, and have a chat with him, and he can advise you on all the sort of things you need. So please, over lunch, network, chat to each other, go and chat to our friends at the back, and find out 
if you need any questions answered, come and ask me as well. I will cough a lot, warn me now, I'll come and cough. So I do burst into coffee pits on a regular basis, so don't worry about that. So to start with, I would like to start off by introducing our first speaker today from Nottingham Council, um, Councillor David Trimble, who is the portfolio holder for Leisure and Culture for Nottingham. So would you like to come and say a few words? Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for all the tireless and really, really important work that you're doing in the hard parts around the country. Good morning, everyone. Mostly, when I, when I get up to speak, I have to start by saying, Lord Mayor or fellow councillors. So, it makes a really pleasant change to sort of just stand up and start something by saying, friends. So friends from Nottingham, welcome to Lost the House, and friends from Cudder Field, welcome to Lost the House, but much more importantly, welcome to Nottingham. Sarah says I've got leisure and culture, and that's a very, very wide portfolio. It includes libraries, leisure centres, theatres, museums, events all around the city like Goose Fair, Splendour, Mill Race, Tour of Britain, uh, music, <coughs> Sports and heritage buildings. Whilst I love all those, those people that know me and know me well know that my real passion is parks and open spaces, which is why I wanted to do this in the first place. When I pitched for this very wide portfolio about eight and a half years ago, <coughs> my mantra to my political group was that I wanted to make a real difference in our parks and open spaces. And I was determined that I wanted to leave our parks and open spaces in a far, far better place than where I found them. So words, the words determination and commitment from me on their own are not enough. I can raise our parks up the political agenda from down here to up there. I can get parks discussed around the cabinet table much more than have ever been discussed before in the past. But without a committed and dedicated, small, small though it may be, parts team, I cannot make any of those real differences that happen on the ground and all those improvements. So I'm very proud of a small parts team that has worked between being the national champions, uh, parts team of the year, four times in the last six years and three times in succession. Now as a city we've gone from four green flags to 22 green flags, two heritage green awards, three university green flags and 15 community green flags. And that is a fantastic achievement by all of our communities and our friends group have played their full and active part in that. We know that our most successful parts are the ones with positive forward-looking friends groups. Your strong views are really, really important. <coughs> when you put in funding based the Heritage Lottery Fund, uh, Sport Brand, Sport England and others. We all require community support and in the last five years, despite massive austerity cuts and the council's cut, uh, funding being cut by over £100 million by the government, we in the city have invested over £30 million uh, in our parks and open spaces. And most of that has been developed funding bids to organisations uh, and with, with support from our friends groups. We've got around 40 friends groups in Nottingham and they are also at the heart of much of the volunteering that happens in our parks and open spaces. And I want to put on record my sincere thanks and appreciation for all the voluntary work, work uh, done in our parks. We've had over 200 volunteer sessions with 2,300 volunteers coordinated by the Ranger Service. Not only is that work very valuable and important, but it can also be used as in-kind contribution uh, when, we, when we put in funding bids, and that, that is worth, that amount of work is worth 100 
yeah, the terrorism pattern and that in kind of contribution. But if I could just spend a minute or two on what I would like to see for the future. We've got a couple of friends, we've got a couple of friends from Birmingham here. And in Birmingham, as well as the traditional model of friends groups, Birmingham have a range of activity friends groups. They are people that meet in a park and maybe once a week take part in an activity. It could be a group of mothers and toddlers to get themselves out of the nursery building and carry out activities in the park for an hour a week. <coughs> As part of a successful Sport England Disco Can campaign, it could be a group of women uh, meeting in the park and running around the park. It could be an old, an old people's home organising a walk around the park on a regular basis. Or it could be a school or a community centre organising activities in the parks uh, for young people. Uh, and I remember, I, I do remember once actually, I, I actually had a walking cemetery <coughs> in the park where a councillor was in the community centre and all the people come, tell them all the complaints, we go off and try to get it sorted out. I organised one in the, uh, in, in the park in my board, right, right, from March to the, to, to the October. Well, I set aside an hour every day, I went to the park, and people wanted to talk to me. They could walk around the park and talk to me. I actually got very few takers in that, which was quite disappointing. But actually, you know, just getting those things off the ground, getting, building them up, is really, really important. So a really good park could have six or seven different types of friends groups. A traditional friends group that does all the important work that they do. And, you know, half a dozen other friends groups that go go out and do all sorts of different activities, all independent of each other. Just think how important that could be when it comes to trying to bring in more investment uh, into our past. They can attract more investment from health, sport England, organisations like that. A lot of money that doesn't necessarily come in at the moment. It could, uh, could add to the 20 or so outdoor gyms that we already have in our parks. Uh, but not just gyms, but other activity things too. I've been talking to Eddie for some time about this now, and I'd really like to get it going. Perhaps even before I found out that Birmingham were already doing it. Secondly, parks funding has never been so tenuous. National strong advocacy organisations that spoke up for parks, such as Cave Space and Green Space, have both folded uh, due to a lack of support and government cuts. These were very, very strong voices for parks, very important voices for parks. So it's important that we do all we can to try and build or build a loud voice for parks uh, in Nottingham, the conurbation and the county. And it's very important that that, that loud voice is a united voice. A loud and united voice that will unashamedly shout for investment into our parks and open spaces. And that is a journey that I think we need to start soon and it's a journey that I hope we start today. Thirdly, I fought hard in my political group uh, to get parks into our manifesto. And that manifesto pledge is in, in this here, Nothing Labour Party manifesto. And it states, to work with local people to deliver more green flag awards within parks and open spaces than any other council in the country. That's a tall order, very, very tall order. And I pushed Teddy to have it, and he was slightly reticent, but he, to, to be fair to him, he said, OK, fair enough, we go. But I mentioned earlier that we've gone from four green flags to 22 green flags, two heritage ones, three university ones, and 15 community green flags. But I would like us all to pull together and get as many green flags as we can, whatever they are. And whilst they all have slightly different titles, I want us to pull in the same direction and regard them as Nottingham green flags. That way, we won't just beat everyone in the country, we will be miles ahead of them. Thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you very much indeed, Councillor. Very good. Right, one thing I need to mention in your packs is you've all got a feedback sheet. I want nobody is allowed to leave this room until they've filled out that feedback sheet because I need to know all your comments about today. So please fill it out when you have to be and leave it on the table on the front. That will be wonderful. And Sarah will help me grab you and grab the feedback sheet from you. So we're well ahead of time actually, so I will try not to talk for too long, but 
I'm afraid you'll hear a lot from me today, but we've got some wonderful presentations this afternoon as well. We've got a lady coming from Hartwick Consultancy and funding doctor, and she's got a lovely presentation all about funding available for parks groups. So that's going to be a really exciting presentation this afternoon. So you've all got to say, there'll be a lovely lunch put on. <laughs> so you've all got to say until the end, very important. So I'm going to fill you in now uh, a bit about who the National Federation is, because you probably haven't heard of us before, what we do, and then a bit about community forums and how important that is that we can take forward. Right, National Federation of Parks and Green Spaces, it's a long name, I know, but trying to find a name that's national and has parks and open spaces in as well, it's got to be quite long. We started a number of years ago from different community forums, us in Birmingham, a um, forum in London, a forum up in, in, um, uh, in Sunderland, just quite a few of us just getting together to say, we're good at networking in our towns and our cities, but we need to network nationally. We need the community voice national as well as just our areas. And then we need to look at all these spaces that doesn't have that and bring it all together. So that is why we started up. Green Space National Charity, which the council mentioned earlier, were the help of setting this up originally. And then we unfortunately lost Green Space. But very thankfully, Keep Britain Tidy have come in, they're now running Love Parks really strongly. And so Keep Britain Tidy and Love Parks are our main partner now, and they're helping us to keep going as well. Our partners, very important, very essential to keep going. So our committee is made up from different forums across the country. We get together four times a year and we meet in Birmingham. We currently have enough bits of funding so we can pay everyone their expenses. So we have a representative from a community forum across the whole of the country. We all get together four times a year to discuss what we do, how we can help each other, and then what we need to do nationally to get our voice heard and to make that difference. Um, we attend other conferences and do other talks across the country. I've been around, I was in Glasgow recently actually, speaking to a new forum starting up there. So we're going out there, spreading the word of how friends groups work, how to get together as a forum, and just networking ourselves all together, which is what we're about today. <coughs> um, we share knowledge and information, we've got publicity, publications, we've got a petition out, we have it on the website. I've got a few flyers down there for you if you want to grab hold of it. It's all about saving our parks. We're just using it to raise the profile. Raise the profile of what friends groups and community groups do. And raise the profile of parks and open spaces. Because as we all know, there are so many cuts happening at the moment. The community voice is essential now to help save our parks and open spaces. We can't be the main person doing the work on the site, that's got to be the landowner and has got to be the council and they are, they are our main partner. But we bring that added value to the site, which makes so much of a difference. So, and that added value, the importance of the community, we all know this. We bring in more money through the funding bits we do, we help protect that site, more activities, more events happen as a result of all the work we do on our sites. And that is essential. Remember, it's that added value that we bring. The council, I don't think these days, could do that without us. We, it's the perfect partnership, the council and the community, the landowner and the community, working together hand in hand. Perfect partnership. We're all really busy with our own groups. Really, really busy. We've got so much to do on our sites. But what we've got to keep and remember is what affects our site affects all the other sites in the area as well. So what we've got to do is start banding together and talking together. It's a little bit extra, but it makes that difference. If we talk together in the area, help each other out, get a little forum started, do that bit extra, then your site gets better as a result of it. And so do all the other sites in the area. You find out what's going on, you help each other out. And that is so important in making the difference.
a few out there at the moment. So I said, I come from Birmingham. We run, myself and my colleague Sarah, we run the Birmingham Open Spaces Forum. We've got about 130 groups. It's a lot of groups, but then Birmingham's huge. So it's not enough. And it's all community-led and community-run with Birmingham as our main partner. We need more of these. There are a few in East Midlands. We've got Derby, Nottingham's really getting to grips. There are a few out there where you're already talking, you're already networking up. But we need more. <coughs> Such a powerful voice. In Birmingham, a couple of years ago, they were going to cut about 2.7 million just from the parks budget. We as Birmingham Open Spaces Forum got that information out to all our community groups. Within the small period of time that the consultation was going on, we told all our groups, here's the consultation document. This is the section that is for the parks. This is our response to it. This is how you do your response. This is when you do your response, fine, and this is where you need to send it. Use ours, write your own, it's up to you. And we chased them over that period. At the end of that period, over the whole of the council, the one voice that was loudest over all sections was parks. And we made that difference. Instead of cutting 2.7, they only cut the 0.7 from the parks budget. We saved two million because the community voice. It is powerful, it is really good. As we can get together, and that was getting all the friends groups, like everybody in this room today together saying, this is important, this is what we do, and we can make that difference. And it did, we were listened to and we were acted on. And we're gonna to have to do it again. It's, we did it once, it worked. We're going to do it again, and we're going to make sure it works again. So, it is important, this community voice. So, moving on. <laughs> How to start a forum if you haven't started one up, and what are the benefits of it? As I said, get together all the groups you know of in your area. Get everyone's email addresses, it's the cheapest way of doing it, and just get everybody talking. Get everyone together in one room. Fine, you need two or three key people to go, yes, we're going to do this. Just to do that little bit extra, to gather everyone together, to make sure you've got everybody's contact details, and to keep everybody in touch. If you then get a little committee together, you know about committees because you've got them all already, then you can get a little constitution, again, very easy. There's forums out there, I can send you hours, you can tailor it to yours. No problem. You've started up your forum, you've constituted, you can then start looking for funding as a forum for the whole area, not just your own park. Really important. Um, as I said, the council as the landowner is your main partner. They need you just as much as you need them. It is essential. In Birmingham, we see it as the ideal partner. We meet regularly with Dan and Cher, who's the head of parks. We regularly find out what we can do to help the parks department save jobs, save budget cuts, to get the word out further. And then we find out from the council what they need from us to help get the word out more, get more information out there, get people more involved. It is a really good partnership. So working together closely with the council works really well. We need each other, especially in this current climate. I asked a number of our forums to send me what the main benefits have you found from starting up? And this is the information they found. So the sharing information with like-minded groups, dispelling the myth, which is really good, because communication is essential. There could be myths and rumours out there, and you hear it, and you don't know if it's true or not. But if you've got a forum, it can find out this is the real case, this is what's happening, this is what we need to respond to, and find out the correct information straight away. As I said, getting the voice of the community heard, working, making a positive, positive difference with the landowner <coughs> and saving jobs and reducing cuts. That's what a number of the forums out there have sent me that they have found their, most be their main benefit from having that forum in existence. <coughs> there are currently around about 55 forums out there at the moment. There's quite a few. But there are actually more that we don't know of yet and we're trying to find out. So hopefully, getting together in these net regional networks, we can find more forums that already exist where the groups have got together 
and then areas where there are a lot of groups and get you together and help start a little forum up. If you've got a number of groups in your area and you want to get together and make it a little forum, then speak to me. Speak to Anthea at Love Parks. We can help you do that. The information is out there. The help and the experience is out there. Then you can come and join us at the Nat our, Nat our National Nat Fed meetings. We, we just, it's not scary. We just get together around the table four times a year, help each other out, talk things over, and find out what's going on, and come up with ideas of what we're going to do. So you can come and join us. And there's help. There is help and support out there. You are never going to be on your own with it. So this is just a little bit of a snapshot of just one or two of the ones that are out there. We've got new ones like Glasgow and Doncaster. They both started last year, so very new. Small amount of groups been going about a year, but they're very key. Just getting going. So if you haven't formed a forum yet, don't worry about being new. There's a lot of new ones starting at the moment. We've also got ones like Bromley, ourselves in Birmingham, Stockport, Greenwood, who've been going for a long time, 10 years plus. So the experience is out there. It does work. We can prove it works. Again, it doesn't matter how many groups are in your area. You can be a forum with 10 or 12 groups. It's not a problem. <coughs> that is still an important get together your networking. Okay, in Birmingham we've got 130. But we've got 591 parks and open spaces. So 130 isn't actually enough, really. So I'm always trying to get new groups starting up all the time. So it is a bit of extra work and it is a bit tricky at times. Sometimes you lose your main push and your main person and you've got to regroup and you've got to find somebody else who's passionate to take on that role of chair and the main lead. But if you get two or three people working together, sharing it out, it's not that difficult. You're not on your own. There's so much help and support out there for you to do it. So, what next? As I've always been saying, get together. If you've got a forum already existing, great. Who else is out there? What else can you do? Are there any parks or open spaces that need help setting a new group up? We've all done it. We've all set groups up. We know how to do it. We've got constitutions. We know the pitfalls. We are the best people to help a new person set a group up. It's very daunting to start with. When you first set a group up, you don't know what you're doing. It's really quite scary. But if someone out there has already done it and goes, this is how you do it, here you go, this is what we do, it helps. And that person and that group can set up so much more easily as a result of that help and support from someone else local. Share that knowledge. Come and join us at the Nat Fed. Be a forum, send a representative. It's only four times a year. And we try to make it a bit light-hearted and fun. Food is supplied, so we always try to feed everybody, and we want to see everybody there. <coughs> That's all the work. So, <coughs> from today, have a chat. Get to know who else is out there. We're all quite local. It's a big area. The east is a huge area. In fact, I think it's one of the biggest regions. But what one group is doing is pretty much the same as what another group is doing. Very similar. Find out what other people are doing. Share that knowledge. Talk to each other. Network. And it's amazing what you'll find out. You could be inspired by something you hear today to go, I've not done that before. I'll give that a go when I get back with my group. You might be able to stand up here and give the knowledge out to say, we've done this, and another group will listen and go, that's amazing, I'll go and try that. So it's a really good way of sharing. And I said, what we want to do today, we've got our friends groups, friends groups networked into a forum, forums all networked up into the National Federation. But in that, there will occasionally be areas where it's difficult to set up a forum. It could be very rural, but it could be all very exposed and not close to each other. So let's get this East network set up so we can get forums and friends groups and networked up together and everybody talking. 
This is the start of it today. Everybody in this room. There's so many more people out there. Um, hopefully, we can find them, add them in, help out, and increase the network. And so this is hopefully just the start today, and we can grow as we move forward. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, um, joining the National Federation, two questions. One, is that appropriate? Is it appropriate for individual friends groups to directly join the National Federation? What or we, is it intended to be for forums? It's for forums or groups of friends groups. So even if, say, three or four friends groups yeah. in an area got together, then they can send a representative along. Yeah, so the, yeah, so from the point of view of being Nottingham, it, the, it's, it's, it's Nottingham forum that would yes. direct join the that would be perfect. So yeah. therefore, it's not too onerous on all the friends groups. The friends groups all get together to form the forum. We'll get together to form Nottingham <laughs> forum. Yeah. And then out of that forum, you can decide one or two people who can then go to the national, who can then be there waving the, the Nottingham flag <coughs> Perfect. Any more questions? <laughs> oh, again, through these ever so quickly, so I can lots of just a minute slots. Yes? Quick, quick one, Tally. <coughs> will you make all these presentations available to us afterwards? Yes, I will, so. What I'm going to do, yes, Anthea has been wonderful and is taking a little, I've got a camera at the back to so just take a note of us all who's speaking. Um, and I will have the actual presentations as well and I can email them out, because I've got all your email addresses, so I can get information out to everybody. We can get presentations out to you, I can send out my list of useful websites to you again, and we can start getting useful information out to you all. You mean you can send out the PowerPoint? I can, yes. That's I I've shrunk it. That. That'll save me a lot of work. That's good, <laughs> oh, I'm pleased about that. Yes, I've shrunk it so it's about, it's only about two to three meg, so it's not too huge. So I can send that. Yeah. Um, the next, the, the Derby one's a bit bigger, but what we'll do is, we'll, it's about 12, 10 or 12 meg, so it might, but if, what we can do is try and put it on a website and then send a link to it so you can get it all. So we'll work it out somehow for you all. You mentioned about the East Group and the East Midlands. Are we talking about the East Midlands? It is the East Midlands, but it covers all the way across the East. If you see. Is it Lincolnshire, Nottingshire, Derbyshire and Leicestershire? Is yes. I mean by East Midlands? Yes. That's what we mean by day each other, isn't it? I've more at least angry. <laughs> yeah, but at the moment, if we can get them involved, it will be good. If it ends up, if there's a lot, say, from East Anglia wanting to start up, then we can start it up with our own network. It's not a problem. I said, the East is, this is the biggest region. Yes? Are you advocating forums and tied to council boundaries? It's, I find it's useful. It's not essential, but it's useful because then you're working with one council as the main landowner, partner. If it's going over council boundaries, then you just need to know you're working with two, maybe, or three, and there could be different policies. So it's not impossible. It is just a little bit more work. So what we did in Birmingham is with the Birmingham area for Birmingham City Council, and that is our area. And then if people are interested outside, well, we'll give information, but then say Sandwell and Dudley, we want them to do their own forums and then talk to us as a forum. Any more questions? Yeah. So how often do you say the forums meet? As a forum, it is up to yourself how often you meet. In Birmingham, what we've sorted out is that we've got a committee of about 10, 12 people from different friends groups. And as a committee, we get together once a month. Um, and we sit down and we work out Birmingham as a whole issues of how we're going to take something forward. Um, if we say looking at the Birmingham in blue, what we're doing to help out. Looking at other issues, Birmingham wide. Um, working with the Active Parks project we're working with at the moment, we can mention getting more people doing activities. We look at Birmingham as a whole rather than individual sites. And that's what we do and we get together monthly. Where do you meet? Is it in a council? Yes, we usually find, well, we usually try to find um, a council office in a park to get a room free, but we do have some money now, so we're trying to maybe look at a city centre location now, but that's going to cost us, we know that, but maybe city centre, because we've got people from our committee from north and south, Birmingham, it's huge, it's too huge. <laughs> Hopefully your areas will be smaller so it'll be easier to get together. And yes, the council
council supplying a free room is, is really useful. But then the council officers are part of our meeting. We just, our friends groups and our committee get together in our meeting. But we then meet regularly with Darren Cher and the park managers and the park rangers. And we're regularly talking and sharing and moving things forward with them. Any other questions? No? Wonderful. If you think of anything, come and grab me at lunchtime. It's not a problem. Oh, well, okay. yes? You did say you had a website? I have a Birmingham oh, website. Yeah. Is it listed? Where? Right. I, it's not listed, but I can send it out. We've got a Birmingham, I've got a Birmingham Open Spaces Forum website, which is... Google. Yeah, Google Birmingham Spaces Forum, you'll find us. It's bosf.org.uk. And we do have an AtFed website. Um, it's changed from that. Um, again, Google National Federation of Parks and Green Spaces, and it will be on there. But I will send you out the links. The national one, we're working on the website at the moment. We haven't got much money. We're all the forums getting together nationally, and we're moving ourselves forward slowly but forward. So we're working on that website. But please come and have a look at the Birmingham one, because we have more, we've got more money to do to do a better website on that one at the moment. So come and have a look at our Birmingham one. And feel free to grab any information that's useful to you on it. And again, I will send out the link to everybody. Right, so we are therefore ready to start our case study. And we'll let the ice cream go. Thank you very much. I would now like to introduce Colin Attenborough from Derby. He's from the Friends of, let me pronounce this right, Sing Finn Moor Park and Local Nature Reserve. And he has come to do a talk all about the wonderful work they're doing in Derby. Thank you. Right, thanks Sarah. Thank you everybody. Nice to see you all this morning. Just, you know, I was really apprehensive last night to come to Nottingham at half past seven. <laughs> At 7. At 7.35 it didn't matter. Not Forest Gold that long ago. Is there any Forest fans here? Oh, no, you have to say nothing of Forest here. Well, they don't want me because they really work like teamwork, they did. And they deserve to win. And as I'm a dedicated Derby County supporter, I accept how they play. But never mind, this is where we are. We've got a great teamwork, and we're at Sydney Moor Park, Local Nature Zone. My name's Colin Attenborough, I'm the chair of the group, and I'm going to tell you a story. A story all about how we form, what took place, and what we do now. And so here we are, look, friends of Sydney Moor Park, Local Nature Reserve. There's 18 friends groups in Derby, of which there's 10 nature reserves, and it's a total of 11% of the green spaces take up the city of Derby. So let's move on then, Sarah. Here we are, look, this is the Derby. Here we are down here with Sydney Moor Park in the south of Derby. The Rolls Royce facilities are all over here, all the engineering group. Lovely golf course next door. And this route 64, 66 of the cycle route that goes through our nature reserve. Thank you, Sarah. Next one. Oh, here we are, sorry, Sydney Moor Park. Here's our layout. Now, and over there you'll find lots of leaflets that we brought, and you're welcome to step one over with you. We drafted with the park department and our group made this leaflet so you can see and you'll see everything that we do. Here we are, look, here's all the football pitches. Here's all the, the down here, this is all the different ones here in the reserve. And we draw a map and you see the map in that leaflet. 38 hectares site we do and look after. We really respect it and it respects us. It's not green flag, it may be one day, but who cares? As long as you get great pleasure from it. And we certainly do. Sarah. Here we are then. We look at all the facilities that we've got on Sydney Moor Park and the nature reserve. There's a play area. A BM Strat went in a couple of years ago. There's eight football pitches. And here we are on the meadows, scrubs and ponds in the nature reserve. It's brilliant. We've even got a lovely pavilion which I'll tell you more about later. Right, so here we are. This, this was the the, the pioneering of Sydney Moor Park Nature Reserve, local nature reserve. In 2008, there was Beverly Roads. Now, I'm sure many will have heard of Royal Derby with Beverly Roads. And how it came about was that there was four wildlife sites on Sydney Moor, and Beverly joined these together and made them a dedicated nature reserve. And what happened was, 
was that this was the start of everything happening. She called in her, we have the, 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 the main pond here, which you can see here. There's James and Sarah Frith. Now they do management plans. Probably <coughs> may have been involved with them because they do management plans are all over. And here's the main pond. It was midsummer and it was dried up. But there was the start of all this first management plan that James and Sarah came and did, 2008 to 2013, it's going to be. Thanks, Sarah. And here we move into Simp and Wildwick, 2008. <coughs> what happened there was Beverly called Radio Derby down, and every day they came down. And they came to give a, they wanted to cover everything. They, they came down, and there you see, uh, was making all the bird boxes. Over 100 bird boxes was made and put up. And then there was the, then we had next call for an historian. And this fellow came and the, he got a, he got that there was racing on Simping Moor in the 1700s. And he got even a copy of the program, of the racing program, and he used to race on there. Um, there was also, uh, oh I know when we started, we decided to buy a generator and do a moth night. Because it was really keen to get, we got some, you know, bits of funding were starting to come along. Anyway, we rigged this moth night up. It was late on an August night, and uh, we got the white sheet up, I have this sheet and that, and we bought this lamp, you know, I have a lamp that don't talk to us. And uh, we said, let's start the generator up. Well, we've got the mixture of the oil and wrong in it. Well, you ought to see the thick white smoke going everywhere up there. I remember John saying to me, and she said, have you seen a moth yet? I said, I've not even seen you yet. <laughs> it was that thick with fog and that, but we had a laugh about it, and eventually we did see something, you know. Well, um, as I say, there were clearing paths. And the main thing was, what started a lot of it all was that there was a bird's nest with plastic bags in. <coughs> and there we found, all in the, the part of this compartment one, which is the, the main one with the pond, is there were thousands of crisp packages. Because the local community school was there, and there was no fencing up, so it blew everywhere. Well, Beverly got everything going. It was, um, there was about 100 or so bags of rubbish in the end. They were all uh, crisp packages. But um, as I say, this was really the start, the start that Beverly really brought us together and that, that everything was oh, it could be successful here. We even had suddenly the school children started to come down. And this, this was really magnificent. People started to know about the nature reserve. Thank you, Sarah. Then, Jean Long, who is our project officer, said, look, we'll have a, that's on our nature club. And you know, from 2008, so even next week we've got the nature club coming up. But, uh, on the third Sunday every month, we have the children nature club for 11 years and under, and they come along free, they have free refreshments, they're welcome with the families, and they do all different activities. They have your pond dipping, meadow sweeping, they uh, come along, we even get to uh, Edda Leggett from Prickly Ball Lot and brought her edge jobs up. Then the children made edge jobs. And here they are out here, they do mini beast hunting, Everything. Beverly brought her barn house along, and as I say, it was, it's magic. You want to see it, the lobby, the lobby in ancient Rome. As I say, it still goes today from all those years that Jean does a fantastic job there. Back, sir. Now, BTC, that many of you will know, is the British Trust of Conservation Volunteers. And along came Steve Wright. Steve Wright and his team came, and we thought, what's going to happen here? Well, it really, it was magic. They put new benches in, we had new benches, one opposite the pond. Grants and funding arrived. Expert training came to us, because we've got to learn all these different things. Edge laying took place. There was, uh, the, the, the star was renovated, all from there. And then we had uh, two events went each year into the Parks and Activities booklet. Graham Toon used to put this together. Sadly, it's had to go on to the deck because of the cutbacks. But in that, we put two events. <coughs> And that's when people started to come down because there'd be walks around the park and different activities. Schools and uniform groups came along and they were putting in wildflower clubs. It was really taking off really great now, as I say. So moving on, Sarah, the Millennium Ponds Project. <coughs> now what happened was that they needed lots more ponds in Great Britain and they came along down to us and we've got 14 ponds. 14 ponds, we've got names to them, John Ego, all names to them, Mississippi Mud, String of Pearls, the Donut Pond, I remember that day. <laughs> the the Rolls Royce uh, boy, uh, apprentices come down, you ought to see them. They come down, <coughs> well, everybody get working, they say, hey, they said we haven't got a uh, tow tectors. Well, they thought they planned it. They thought if we don't bring them down, we won't be doing anything. So 
The bus went back, got all the tow tapes and nothing, they dug out this donut pond. You can see why it's so cold. That's just one of the ponds there, as I say on there. So there's 120. And can I just mention now about Derek Golson? Because the Derby City Pond Warden Association, and that's chaired by Derek Golson. Don't you everybody looks at the website? They've got a brilliant website, plus a long, long wonderful newsletters that he does. There's 120 ponds in the city of Derby and 61% of a pond warden. And one of our pond wardens, Kelvin Lawrence, is here and Barbara Owens is the other one. And so there it was that all these ponds went in and then trees started to go in. Hundreds and hundreds of trees were put in. There was John used to name all these, Jubilee Wood, Coronation Meadow, Hazel Grove, and then at the back of Redwood School was the Arboretum. John Pine, this Arboretum, with hundred trees in that the children came and planted. Some of them are five foot on now. And sadly, Kelvin will remember it, he came and tabulated hundreds of trees they put in. But you have the enemy come, that's travellers. And they broke in and sadly tethered the horses up and trod lots of the trees down. We've had them come in five times over our head. They know it like the back of the hand. But you have to get on with it, don't you? You don't just stop. And so as I say, Kelvin sadly all them trees got to demolish some of them. And here you see, uh, as I say, this was in Wayne's Wood there, look. That was a sad occasion when sadly Wayne, who put lots of bird boxes up in Wayne's Wood, uh, sadly died. And we dedicated this particular time, there was a cherry tree went in, and there it was, Wayne's Wood that hangs in the pavilion now. And that was a lovely day in memory of Wayne. <coughs> so, as I say, wonders of bird boxes went up. And at that time, BTCB, the British Trust Conservation Body, became TCB. It became the conservation volunteers. So that moved on a bit. Right, thank you, Sarah. Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention there about the tree planting team. That was some of the parks department. And there's, there's Dean Long, our project officer. There's Calvin, our tree warden. And there's some of the gang here from the, from the council. And that we came down the hill. Thanks, Sarah. Now, then, what happened was, we got a lovely pavilion there. It was, it was, it was only the changing rooms for the football. And so we used to do our nature club in there and said, hey, how about um, doing a capri? And so what happened was that the council kindly gave us, we applied and we had a lease, in which they kindly gave us 30 hours a month to do a capri on a Saturday morning or a Wednesday or whenever there's a big fun day on the park. And in that way, um, we give them, of course, you do match funding for all what takes place. We have to fill in our how, how all the hours it's done. It all goes into the council. They know exactly what we do. And there we are, we started the cafe. It's a winner. It's a winner. Do you know, it really funds well. We've got five stars rated, and we charge 50 people a cup of tea, and the bacon comes at one pound 20 a winner. We sell loads of them. You just love the bacon cobs. That was when we had the Christmas fair. We had the Christmas fair there, and it was super. And, and as I say, we really work hard on that cafe. There's Trisha and Karen, and it's such a lovely environment, and we really we think the world of it. And people come down, it's like a social place, because the people say, I never knew about your park down here, or your nature reserve, and there they was enjoying the bank buddies, <coughs> giving me even newspapers to read. And it, it's a success today, and that goes every Saturday. Sadly, we have to close it today, because most of the key holders are here. <laughs> but never mind, we have a good list that we will not be coming in. Thanks, Sarah. Here we go, <laughs> section 106 funding. Do you know a lot of this seems to add up to when Sam and Tom was all about what to do and that, isn't it? It's like what we do it. So I'm really pleased to think in that way that we're probably there in that advance of that. Well, section 106 funding, as you know, is when, say, new houses go up or new industrial buildings, so it gives so much back to the environment. And luckily, Delaware City Council and the Parks Department got together and what did they do for us? They put a new path in that linked the nature reserve down to the children's playground and back to the pavilion. And here you can see, look, the landscaping at the park entrance. And there, look at the plants that came. God, there was hundreds and hundreds of them there. And they all went in, and they look a magnificent entrance there now. And at the back, they put a super patio in for us, all railed in, and it was really, it's great. And all the big rocks that went in, and we've got a lovely place there. I, that 106 funding brought a lot of pleasure to us and to people around the Symphony area. Well, they don't just come from the Symphony area, they come from everywhere. 
And so that funding was really important. And then it came, sad news. Beverly Rose was to be made redundant. Because of the cutbacks, Wild Derby was to finish. And we thought, crikey me, what's next? And then another bit of bad news come. The Derbyshire TCB was to finish, the conservation volunteers. We thought, what's going on for you? There, Steve Wright, who'd done that for years, because he was really the only paid person or employee, all the others are volunteers. We used to have them coming down, often you see, doing all this work for us, and suddenly they're gone. So that was Beverly, the Wild Derby gone, and Steve Wright of the TCB gone. So, well, what's going to happen next? We've lost everything, all our support. And, and this is what you need, all this support. So we thought, what's that? And then we had a winning lottery ticket. We had a winning lottery ticket because 